Welcome, everyone. Um, we are very pleased to have Dr. Catherine Groper from Sacred Heart University today, and she will speak about growth mindset teaching, how teacher beliefs perpetuate inequity, and uh, evidence-based tips for creating more equitable classrooms. All right. Well, thank you so much. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure speaking with you this afternoon, um, and thank you for organizing, Maddie. Um, as uh, you said, I'm Dr. Katie Croper, and I'm an assistant professor of psychology at Sacred Heart University that's in Fairfield, Connecticut, so not too far away. Um, today, I will be sharing some of my ongoing research examining how teachers can communicate their beliefs about intelligence, that is their mindset beliefs, um, to their students. Um, as as well as discuss, um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about how teacher mindset has been shown to influence students' sense of identity safety in the classroom. So their belongingness, their concerns about stereotyping and fairness, et cetera. Um, and I'll overview that research and discuss ways that teachers can signal growth mindset beliefs in their classroom in order to promote student belonging and in turn support student academic achievement. So let's get started. There we go. Um, so the work that I'm sharing today is going to build on over 25 years of mindset research. So I'm going to start with some brief background to get everybody up to speed. So mindsets refer to people's cognitive tendencies to view traits, including intelligence, um, as either malleable or as fixed. So people who endorse more growth mindset beliefs tend to think that human traits are malleable and can be changed through effort and flexi flexibly adopting uh, useful strategies, whereas people with fixed mindsets um, tend to think that human traits are rigid and unchanging. You either have that trait or you don't have it. Um, and until recently, researchers in this area mainly uh, conceptualize mindset as an individual difference variable. So they focus on how the lay beliefs of students influenced students' own academic motivation and achievement. Uh, but my research group takes a different tack. We treat mindset instead as a cultural variable. So specifically, we examine how the actual and the perceived mindsets of teachers and professors as culture creators in the classroom affect students' feelings of identity safety and in turn, their achievement. So why would professors' beliefs, um, their mindset beliefs matter? Um, how would those beliefs create cultures of threat or cultures of safety? And to understand this, it's important to first recognize that harmful stereotypes impugning the competence and intellectual abilities of racially and eth ethnically minoritized people, um, as well as the abilities of women in STEM fields persist to this day. And students and teachers are aware of these stereotypes and they have an enduring impact on classroom and professional contexts. And as we'll see in a moment, a teacher's mindset about whether student intelligence is a fixed trait or a malleable one can signal to students, particularly students from marginalized backgrounds, whether they're gonna be evaluated in a biased or an unbiased way by their teacher. So to illustrate, let's imagine a classroom context from a marginalized STEM student's perspective. So a student from a group that's often excluded from and negatively stereotyped within STEM settings. So first, I want you to imagine that based on this student's observations of the classroom, they suspect that their professor might have a fixed mindset. They think their professor believes that STEM abilities cannot be changed. Um, and in such a classroom where their professor believes that some students just have it and others do not, it would be reasonable for them to also suspect that their professor believes certain groups of students, like those traditionally advantaged in some settings, like white and often Asian men, have more ability than groups traditionally stereotyped in these settings, like Black, Latinx, Native American students, and or women in STEM. And indeed, recent work by my colleagues shows exactly this. So when a calculus professor was described as fixed-minded, um, male and female students, but especially female students, inferred that the professor also endorsed negative stereotypes about women's math ability. 
But when the calculus professor was described as growth-minded instead, viewing STEM abilities as malleable and improvable with effort and um, productive learning strategies, students were less likely to infer that the professor endorsed gender stereotypes. Students instead inferred that the professor expected all students uh, could put in effort and adopt the strategies that are needed to, in order to be successful. And this pattern has been replicated in actual classroom context too. So it goes beyond lab-based experiments. So for example, in one study, students overall performed worse in classes taught by professors who self-reported more fixed mindset beliefs versus growth mindset beliefs. And this pattern was strongest from students from marginalized backgrounds. So here the stripe bars represent the majority advantage group of students, in this case, white and Asian students, and the solid bars represent minoritized marginalized students who in this study um, primarily identified as Black, Hispanic, Latinx, and Native American. And what you can see here is the racialized achievement gap where minoritized marginalized students perform more poorly in STEM classes overall compared to white and Asian students. But what's interesting here, though, is that we see this racialized achievement gap is twice as large in courses taught by faculty who self-report having fixed mindset beliefs. Um, that is, the racialized achievement gap nearly doubles when faculty endorse a fixed mindset compared to a growth mindset. Um, further, using both experience sampling and longitudinal methods, my research group has found that when professors are perceived to believe that intelligence is a fixed and unchangeable trait, their students report less belonging in the classroom and greater imposter feelings in the classroom. And these identity threatening responses among students predict lower course engagement, less interest, and poorer performance, all of which are outcomes that should really trouble teachers who are in the business of educating students. Uh, consistent with this, another recent study, um, some of my collaborators found that a direct to student growth mindset intervention that taught students the benefits of a growth mindset um, and how the brain is malleable um, and can be changed through effort and hard work, that intervention only improved students' end of term math performance when the treated students were also interacting with a math teacher who personally endorsed growth mindset beliefs versus fixed mindset beliefs. And in discussing their findings, the researcher, researchers used a really nice analogy of planting a seed in fertile versus infertile soil. Um, so the growth mindset message here is the seed, and it's better able to take root in the minds of students, the soil, um, where there are compatible messages coming from leaders in the context, like teachers. So to continue the analogy, the seed needs fertilizer, it needs water, it needs sunlight in order to to grow. Merely planting the seed is not enough. So we now know that the actual and the perceived mindsets of teachers influence students' sense of belonging in the classroom, as well as their academic success. And this is particularly true for students from marginalized backgrounds. But how exactly do teachers signal their beliefs about intelligence to their students? And by understanding how these beliefs are communicated, might we be able to help instructors create growth mindset class, uh, growth mindset classroom cultures, thereby promoting identity safety among their students? Well, in some mixed method research, I explored this question. So my collaborators and I, we first uh, conducted a series of focus groups with a total of 40 uh, undergraduates, obviously not all in the same focus group, but distributed across many. Um, and we asked these students whether they had ever encountered instructors who seemed to endorse fixed or growth mindset beliefs about ability. And every student we talked to could remember at least one instructor who seemed to endorse more fixed mindset beliefs and at least one who seemed to endorse more growth mindset beliefs. Then we asked students to write about why they thought their instructor endorsed those beliefs. And after writing, we discussed their responses as a group. And from this rich qualitative data, we uncovered four themes that signal to students that their professors endorse growth mindset beliefs. So it appears that um, by deliberately communicating that all students are capable of success, by providing opportunities for practice and feedback, 
offering emotional support um, to struggling students and explicitly valuing learning and development over brilliance and flawless performance, professors can communicate growth mindset beliefs to their students. <clears throat> so next, we sought to quantitatively test whether these four themes that I just mentioned shape students' perceptions of their professors' mindsets, free of any retrospective biases that may have been present in the focus group data. So in another study, we had an entirely new group of students engage in a categorization task. Uh, various professor behaviors corresponding to the four themes we had identified were flashed on the screen. And students in the moment categorize them as either growth-minded or as fixed-minded as quickly and as accurately as possible. So we're gonna try a little demonstration here so you can all like put yourselves in the shoes of these participants. Um, so a teaching behavior in a moment is gonna appear on the screen. And if you think that it signals a professor is growth-minded, I want you to use the green check mark emoji in your Zoom reactions. Um, but if you think that it signals a professor is fixed-minded, I want you to use the red X emoji. So in a moment, I'm gonna put a professor behavior on the screen. I'll read it aloud, and then you either use that green check mark if you think it signals a growth mindset of ability uh, on the part of the professor, or a red X if you think it signals a fixed mindset of ability. All right. Here's the first one. Professor recommends online resources that supplement course content. So what do we think? Um, if a professor did this, would you think they have a growth mindset that they believe intelligence is changeable or a fixed mindset they believe prejudice is unchangeable? Okay, yeah, so looking at the responses, um, I'm seeing mostly thumbs up. So most people think that it signals a growth mindset of ability. And yes, 94% um, of our respondents agreed with you, um, choosing growth-minded for this teaching behavior cue, because providing feedback and providing resources signals a belief that you think students can learn and develop. Otherwise, you wouldn't bother providing these resources because it's time-consuming. It takes effort. Okay. <clears throat> How about this one? So before a challenging lesson, the professor says, some of you will understand this lesson, some of you won't. Um, what do you think? Okay, yeah, this one across the board, we see no's and your rights here. Um, so um, in this case, 97% of our respondents agreed with you. So they chose fixed-minded um, because the professor is verbally suggesting that some students are capable while others are not. Okay, one more. Um, how about to struggling students, the professor says mistakes are opportunities to learn. What do you think? Okay, I, we're a little mixed on this one, but I'm seeing mostly uh, green check marks. And yes, so most students, 98% uh, chose growth minded for this teaching behavior cue because it's showing support. It's showing reassurance to struggling students that failure is okay. You can use that failure um, and learn from it. So if you're interested in digging into this project um, a little bit more, in our 2022 paper cited at the top, um, in our online supplement, there's a list of behaviors that students rated um, uh, as growth-minded with high consensus. So for example, a professor allows students to correct errors and turn in revisions to improve their grade on an assignment. Or the professor says, even if you haven't mastered these concepts yet, you can still succeed. Um, likewise, there's also a list of behaviors that students rated as fixed-minded with high consensus. So professor encourages struggling students to drop the class, or the professor says, not all students are capable of doing well in my class. Um, and if there's time at the end and interest, we can dig into these a little bit more and I can show you. I'm happy to talk through uh, these verbal and behavioral signals more. But across all of these cues, um, what did we learn? 
So in a multi-level logistic regression analysis, we partialed the student level and the Q level variance, and we found that most variation in the categorization decisions was happening between the Qs rather than between the students. So this means that students were mostly in agreement about how each Q should be categorized. And as expected, students were more likely to categorize a behavior as growth-minded when the behavior suggested that all students are capable, um, when it supported struggling students and involved providing feedback or resources, and when it valued learning. Um, and these themes continued to predict students' categorizations, even when we controlled for other factors that may have been varying as well with the cues, um, like the uh, warmth of the behavior versus it being neutral or cold. Um, and this uh, suggests that it's not just about perceiving a behavior, a professor behavior to be warm and fuzzy that matters. That's not what is affecting students' categorization decisions. Instead, it's really more about whether the behavior values learning and acknowledges uh, student potential. And we also controlled for things like students' own personal mindset beliefs. So there wasn't much of a relationship between that and categorization decisions. So we can rule out the possibility that students are merely projecting their own mindsets onto um, their uh, interpretations of professor behavior. Um, I should also note that using a very similar procedure, we replicated these findings in a sample of middle and high school students, um, as you can see here, um, suggesting generalizability of these four themes beyond the college student population. And finally, we tested whether students' observations of their own professor's behavior in real world classrooms predicted their perceptions of their professor's mindset beliefs. Um, and yet again, observing these four behavioral themes and their actual professors teaching predicted growth mindset perceptions in the expected direction. So taken together, um, multiple methods converge to show that the specific ways that teachers communicate with their students shapes their students' perceptions of professor mindset. Um, when teachers communicate that all students are capable, when they provide opportunities for practice and feedback, they offer emotional and practical support to students who are struggling, and when they explicitly value learning and development through not only their words, but also their course policies, um, students perceive their professors to be growth-minded, which in turn promotes feelings of identity safety. Um, so moving forward, we're now investigating what we're calling ambiguous teacher mindsets. Um, so this uh, area of research is brand new. So the data I'm going to be showing you is pretty hot off the presses here. <laughs> um, and we're looking into ambiguous mindsets because in real classrooms, um, teachers might not communicate a pure growth or fixed mindset, but rather send mixed messages that communicate both a growth and a fixed mindset simultaneously. What would be an example of this? Well, you can think of a teacher who might say, success in this class is a combination of talent and hard work. So this statement um, simultaneously implies that success is due to some innate ability, the talent, um, and that communicates a fixed mindset, but also that hard work can improve ability, communicating a growth mindset. So we wondered, what do students make of these common but conflicting um, mindset messages? And some preliminary message, uh, preliminary evidence from research researchers um, in other labs suggest that confusing or ambiguous mindset messages could have negative impacts on students. Um, for example, Buttrick using a nationally representative sample of ninth graders in public high school math classes um, and their teachers found that 38% of high school teachers had a what they call false growth mindset. Um, that is, they agreed with growth mindset statements um, on a survey, but also reported that they were less likely to kind of push their students to try harder challenges or help their struggling students find strategies that work for them. And further, students of teachers um, with these false growth mindsets were more likely to perceive their teacher as having a fixed mindset um, and to endorse a fixed mindset themselves. 
um, and students' own fixed mindsets in turn predicted um, their lower end of year grades. So in fact, students of teachers with false growth mindsets looked almost identical to the students of teachers with fixed mindsets. Um, so why would teachers communicate ambiguous mindset messages at all? Um, well, for one, um, all people's mindset beliefs, including teachers, fall somewhere on a continuum. People range from fixed um, to growth-minded, um, with few, if any, people being entirely growth or entirely fixed all the time. Um, and these mindset beliefs aren't necessarily co uh, constant over situation either. Um, so it's possible that even a highly growth-minded person, someone who has uh, a growth mindset at most times in most situations may say something or do something fixed-minded on occasion. Um, I don't need to tell you that people are imperfect. We all know this already. Um, and related to this, there might be some skepticism about growth mindset. So some work has found that even though pre-service teachers overwhelmingly agreed with growth mindset statements when uh, they were asked on a survey, um, follow-up questions about their beliefs revealed that many were skeptical or had their doubts about growth mindset theory. Um, and these doubts might undermine adherence to growth mindset teaching practices. And third, um, some recent research has found that people, including teachers, um, misunderstand what a growth mindset means. Um, back to that false growth mindset idea I mentioned earlier. So for example, some uh, people equate a growth mindset with just having an overwhelmingly positive, warm, fuzzy attitude, um, or th with the belief that anyone can succeed with hard work alone. Um, and as we've discussed, a true growth mindset is much more than that. A growth mindset is about believing in people's ability to grow their intelligence, provided that they put in hard work, that they seek help when they need it, and that they can pivot to new, more productive strategies when they're struggling. So once they realize that what they've been trying is not working. So to examine the effects of ambiguous teacher mindsets on student outcomes, we conducted a couple of experiments. And in the first one, um, we invited 281 undergraduate biochemistry students um, to read one of three student letters. So one was unambiguously growth-minded with statements like, success in this class is a function of how hard you work to develop your skills. Um, another message was uh, more ambiguous. It had a mix of growth and fixed messages. So success in this class is a combination of talent and hard work. And we had a third message without any mindset content at all. So what did we find? Um, as you can see here, um, students perceived the ambiguous mindset uh, teacher to be more fixed-minded than the unambiguously growth-minded teacher, um, and there was no difference between the ambiguous and no mindset um, conditions. There we go. Um, additionally, um, they perceived the unambiguously growth-minded teacher more positively and expected to be more motivated in their course relative to the other two conditions. And finally, they anticipated feeling more fear of help seeking um, in the ambiguous mindset classroom relative to the other two conditions, um, presumably because they worried that asking for help might mean that they don't have natural ability in this type of more threatening classroom setting. So taken together, uh, it seems that ambiguous mindset messages can be harmful to students, at least relative to an unambiguously growth mindset message. Um, but this raises the question, how do these ambiguous messages compare to an unambiguously fixed mindset message? Is am ambiguity just as bad as fixed-mindedness um, outright? Um, so to test this further, we conducted a second experiment. And this time we manipulated um, teacher mindset again with um, an email, but uh, this time with greater granularity. So the messages students saw ranged from fully growth uh, with four sentences written to communicate growth mindset messages to fully fixed with four sentences written to communicate fixed mindset messages um, and everything in between. 
uh, resulting in 16 counterbalance conditions across four levels of what we're calling fixed mindset dosage. So um, let me move to the next slide quickly. So here, a dosage of zero means that participants saw the fully growth mindset message. So they had zero fixed mindset messages. Whereas a dosage of four means that participants saw the fully fixed mindset message, all four fixed minded sentences. And the uh, dosages in between are mixes of various growth and fixed minded uh, sentences. Um, as you can see with our manipulation check here, um, there is a linear relationship between dosage condition and the perceived uh, teacher mindset. So higher doses of fixed-mindedness um, corresponded uh, to a stronger perception that the teacher is indeed fixed-minded. Now, what does this mean for how students perceived their professor? Um, well, um, as we'll see again and again, the relationship is fairly linear with a kind of leveling off between a dose of three and a dose of four. So we're going to see this kind of uh, L-shaped pattern again and again. But generally speaking, as the professor made more fixed-minded statements, students perceived the professor more negatively. So that's the green line. Um, less positively, which is the red line, and we're less interested in taking future courses with that professor. So that's the blue line. Um, additionally, students exposed to a higher dosage of fixed-mindedness also anticipated being less motivated in the professor's course, so similar to the previous study. Um, and they specifically endorsed having uh, that they would likely have fewer mastery goals um, and slightly greater performance avoidance goals. So this is the desire to avoid failure um, rather than approach success. Um, likewise, uh, students anticipated less positive affects, so fewer positive emotions. Um, they anticipated less belonging um, as the fixed-minded dosage increased, as well as greater negative emotions. Uh, greater evaluation concerns, greater imposter feelings, and a greater fear of help seeking as uh, the fixed mindset dosage increased. Uh, finally, they anticipated greater dropout intentions, um, lower course attendance, and uh, exerting lower levels of effort, um, as well as lower course grades um, as the fixed mindset dosage increased. So taken together, this suggests that when students perceive a professor to be fixed-minded, even a little bit, um, it can undermine their identity safety, their motivation, and their achievement. On the flip side of that, though, maybe putting a positive <laughs> spin on, this, uh, on these data, um, they show that it's not all or nothing. Um, it's not an all or nothing phenomenon. There's a mostly linear relationship with a leveling off that happens when the fixed mindset dosage is quite high. So what does this mean, practically speaking? Um, to me, it suggests that if you are a teacher and you slip up and you say or do something that you know indicates to your students that you have a fixed mindset in a sea of otherwise growth-minded statements and practices, um, it should only have a modest negative impact. Now, of course, you should try to rectify <laughs> that if you can, reiterating your growth mindset, um, but small slip-ups here and there may be okay. As I said, though, before, um, this work is ongoing, so we have a lot more to learn. Um, so we're going to be conducting additional studies to explore um, ambiguous mindsets further, um, hopefully in actual classroom settings, um, and hopefully examining other forms of ambiguous mindset messaging. So here we focus on um, verbal behaviors, but we're also interested in, you know, what if words are misaligned with practice um, and other sorts of uh, instances of ambiguity. Um, and we're also planning to leverage these insights to construct teacher-focused interventions. So we want to explore whether simply teaching professors to communicate their growth mindset beliefs and their words and their policies and their practices um, can create growth mindset cultures. Um, and I think there's some interesting possibilities if we examine how teachers' personally endorsed mindset beliefs might moderate the effectiveness of the, these types of interventions. So, for example, if teachers strongly endorse 
fix mindset beliefs, even after learning about how communicating growth mindsets can benefit their students, um, will their fixed mindset views still shine through? Uh, do teachers need to believe in the growth mindset in order to create a growth mindset culture? Does sincerity of belief affect teacher adherence to growth mindset uh, practices and in turn um, affect students' feelings of identity safety? Um, so these are all uh, avenues for future research that we're very excited about. Um, so that's all I have for you today. Um, but before taking questions, I'd like to, you know, acknowledge funding sources and my fabulous collaborators. Um, and of course, thank you all for taking the time out of your day um, to listen to uh, what we have going on. So thank you so much. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have.